ideas, thoughtfulness, fascinated by the architects, composers, so full of affection and care. By making friends, learning from them, we become the city. Each path taken in the new and in the fragments, we discover ourselves. The city educates us, empowers us. Avatars of people, in culture and tradition, people dream and the city realizes. Those mansions of God, in colors, in shapes and forms, vibrant and extravagant. Beautiful city, blessed with many more visuals. With you, my listening is immense, full of music. We wander lust, seeking harmony. Don't we learn everything from sports? There is a lot to inspire from. There is a lot to play with. Courage to hit back. Strategizing. Team spirit. Yes, you are the city. Designed to communicate, express and enrich the sense of seeing. It's about each and every thought, born inside us. We make our world every day. We are design thinkers. Hello and a very good morning everyone. On behalf of the Arch College of Design and Business, I welcome all our panelists and the attendees to the week four of Design Culture Learning Series. The Design Culture Learning Series is a step towards bringing thought leaders and leading practitioners towards fostering design culture among the aspirants of the creative and innovation domain for a better future. In the last three weeks, we had 12 eminent speakers on themes, creativity, society, and harmonious livability. This week, we would have speakers talking on design leadership. In an increasingly collaborative design world, hard and fast rules don't necessarily apply, but traits like emotional intelligence, future obsession, and design ability does. Our today's speaker has lived and transferred these characteristics to more than 8,000 plus design students and professionals in the last 25 years. So we have today our own founder and director of Arch College of Design and Business, Mrs. Archana Surana. She would be speaking on design culture, power to transform. Arch has been at the nucleus of innovative design-centric interactions and activities since its inception in 2000. In past 22 years, our emphasis is not only on the quality of education, but also on the development of necessary skills and the integration of entrepreneurship in our curriculum. Her contribution in the spaces of youth and women empowerment, she has established strong pathways in design education as well as mentoring through the Women Mentors Forum founded by her. She is the Dean of Fashion Design Faculty and Academic Council member of Rajasthan ILD Skills University, Chairperson Committee of Honorary Doctorate degrees awarded by Trisu. She is the Chairperson for Fashion Colloquia 2020 an international research colloquium hosted and organized by Arch College in Jaipur. She's a Vital Voices Lead Fellow and a UR Icon Awardee at the hands of former Indian President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Sa. In conversation with her, we have Professor Bhargav Mistri, Dean Design Culture at Arch College. We have heard uh, Bhargav Sir in a previous session on design ability, a culture for effective learning. All these sessions uh, are available on the YouTube channel at the Arch College of Design and Business. So you can go back and listen to them there. So, and in the end, uh, 
Bhargav sir would also be sharing about the Pink City Design Confluence, which Arch is hosting in the month of January 2022. So I welcome both our speakers today and over to Bhargav sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mega, so much. And uh, on behalf of the Arch College of Design and Business, a very, very warm welcome to all our viewers far and near to this series of uh, design culture learning. Now, today marks the fourth week, the beginning, the first day of the fourth week of the series, and the theme being design leadership. And when we talk of design leadership, one of the leading names that comes to our mind is our guest today that Mega just introduced, Arsnaji, Arsna Surana the founder director of Arch College of Design and Business, located in Jaipur. Now, Archnaji has closely molded this institution, forming it, reforming it, transforming it into what it is today. So without wasting uh, much time, let's take a deep dive into her journey of creation. Welcome, Archnaji. I'd like to begin with, uh, with a thought that's in my mind. And uh, I look forward to a very exciting conversation with you for all our viewers today. Now, work culture, you know, when very well integrated with design culture, work, work culture, design culture, when well integrated, it does have the power to transform the quality of design leadership to a far more effective and synergistic level. Now, with your long experience in the establishment of uh, Arch over a double decade, almost more than that, how, according to you, is this integration of work and design culture led to the transformation at Arch? Uh, I have had conversation with Arjnaji in the past, and she has amazing stories to tell her, you know, the journey that has led her to what she is today and her institution represents. So, Arjnaji, can I uh, ask you to please uh, share your story with us? Thank you, Bhargav, sir. And... Uh... So it's a matter of co-creation and yeah. you are there with me to have this uh, mission of taking design education to the masses to make a difference to our people. And you are there with me in this whole initiative where we have initiated the Pink City Design Confluence and your designation itself is Dean Design Culture. So, <laughs> yes wanting you to, you know, co-create with me alongside to take, uh, to build a design culture within the institution and outside of the institution with our stakeholders. So, it has been your vision itself. Yeah. To do this. Uh, true. So when I moved into the city in the year 1995, things were a bit different. Uh, design wasn't perceived the way it is perceived today. And I'm sure that uh, as design professionals, you must have also experienced the similar challenges when an institution like the NID was the only institution in the country. And uh, you know, people like you were considered a, a very different breed and people didn't know where you would fit into in, inside the industry. And uh, similarly, when I came into the city, uh, I didn't know where to fit into. But yes, uh, it's very important to follow one's own dream. And uh, I feel uh, that one dream that can completely inspire you to have actions that are worthy of one's own living. So I have a couple of, uh, you know, uh, some slides and presentation. And I thought, you know, it would be nice to uh, put it in a visual treat uh, so yeah. that uh, we can talk about these couple of areas. And yes, I think it will be a good idea. So, sure. Thank you, Mega. So, Mega, would you like to 
share the screen for me and then interesting so here we see three key words design business research this is what arch stands for and uh, when we i talk about design so will uh, so megha you'll have to keep moving with me alongside while i keep talking about these so let's have that so these three key words have been at the foundation of arch uh, in terms of the the pedagogy that we have the design language that we want to speak the difference that we want to make in the arenas that we're talking about so our values have been the guiding light for us and when did these values emerge for me that was much earlier uh, in the year 2000 when i started exploring you know and i saw you know what was that was really inspiring me or driving me i think the whole idea of empowering the self was the first point mm. and that's where probably action or the dream starts unfolding you know you become inquisitive you are curious you want to explore more you want to, one wants to learn so you know believing in one's self so i had this opportunity of going into uh, a mainstream academic pathway you know with my family background uh, you know being academicians and being lawyers and educators so i had this choice where i was given as a uh, opportunity but i refused so i think it's very important that at times in your life one has to say no to couple of things if you truly want to believe in your dreams so right. i think believing in the self is very very important and that's the first step um, you know if you want to actually look at your values or and want to drive uh, any kind of change being responsive and open minded very important it was for me because moving into a new city from delhi having studied fashion and seeing a study uh, a city which was so rich in its heritage right. culture the industry was blooming exports were was happening in a big way within the city itself so what was that was still uh, you know uh, that wasn't there so that was an opportunity that i was seeking and i had to be very open minded to see that what is that my city truly needs now so i felt that most of the design uh, thinking or the design language was more of western uh, yeah. you know they were like service providers to them right. and we were creating jewelry to products to clothing which was all you know led by this uh, you know a western mindset and from the export community whether it could be the japanese or the european or the americans so we i definitely saw there was lots that was happening but where was that originality and the people like uh, faith saying who had moved into the city and created you know had looked into the indigenous knowledge of this city and created a brand like a nokia so uh, year was an opportunity for me where i felt you know the city had immense gems and jewelry and the know how was available there but there's more of you know uh, the design came from those catalogs and things i said why not have designers contribute now so it so today when i'm sitting here i i educated myself in fashion i was teaching at the south delhi politech there in delhi and i when moved here i said okay why not jewelry and the idea was it was probably just being open minded because at times it's important to reinvent yourself for what your people want what the city wants you know and what would be work what would be actually uh, why yeah. so that was important and uh, i became known for my jewelry design programs that i was offering and uh, a three month to a four year degree pathway that got created in this okay. whole journey of 20 years so that's how it was very important to look at what empowers one the self and what empowers the other right 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 that built and i've seen the jewelry in this industry shape from where it was uh, to to what it is today so very interestingly then the whole idea of co-creation came up and how did that co-create the co-creation happened when the swiss development cooperation project happened and i'm going to take you through those couple of uh, more slides to be able to see that and uh, the co-creation was when uh, shopper stop came into the city 
and they were looking for a visual merchandiser. And the whole, the word, I mean, this profession was completely unknown. So in the year 2000, we started a course in visual merchandising and the unit head of Shopper Stop used to come and teach at Arch. And uh, I had this student who was uh, there with me in another institution. And uh, today he is our creative head here and he's one of the ace visual merchandisers of the right. country. And today we have him uh, as a creative head here at Arch College. His name is Anurag Singhal. Wow. And uh, I feel that the whole co-creation that I did with Shopper Stop really, uh, you know, nurtured a lot of young people. And we created some new uh, courses which were truly required at that point of time because the retail industry was booming. Malls were coming up. They were looking for people who knew the retail business from a uh, from a delight point of view. Uh, they could look at people from like visual merchandising. You know, it's known as silent selling. So these were kind of collaborations that I did. I didn't have resources then. So where did I build these resources? I tied up with Singer, and they provided with me the machinery and everything. And that's how I could you know conduct a very successful program, which was with the Swiss Development Cooperation Project with the Rajasthan Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Okay. And this is where actually Arch took off from a very humble beginning from a three room setup. And we actually started expanding and that expansion. So co-creation leads to expansion. So that's where I feel that, you know, it's the time again to collaborate because after COVID, we have seen that, you know, we are in a very vulnerable state. We are in a world where it's highly complex. It's ambiguous. How can we be supportive of each other's initiatives? And that's where the value of co-creation is, uh, you know, is truly, you know, very, very important for all of us to look yes. at at this point of time. Indeed. So Indeed. Uh, very interestingly, how did we evolve? So when we evolve, it's, you know, I mean, when you work towards your own dream, you're fulfilling other people's dream, you're looking at more opportunities. One is looking at providing more and more solutions. And, and then there is a whole collaborative environment to work with. You know, the evolution is inevitable. So you continually involve, there's a great amount of teamwork that happens. Today, you are a team member with me. We have Benoit Sir, who's a team member with us for the last right. 10 years. He's been initiating a lot of uh, research in the space of having our learners understand, understanding who these design learners should be, right? I mean, uh, I, I understand that the glamour quotient of design has been so high that uh, we have probably addressed uh, design in the past two decades, more from the glamour quotient, the fashion quotient of it. But when you look at design, there is so much depth to it. Today, we are talking about society point 5.0, where we move from the digital revolution. So I think as a nation, we have somewhere not, you know, addressed our need to look at design from a very holistic perspective. And as I have evolved and the institution has evolved, I see design as a very holistic pathway of education. Uh, it is, it brings science, it brings commerce, it brings art, it brings that whole acumen all together. So it's, and the best part is, it is so, uh, so much connected with the self. You know, that you are exploring completely, you are learning, you're discovering. And all these things are very important for any human being's growth. Today, we are, it's more about informational learning. But I feel design is truly transformational learning. And transformational learning itself can, you know, have people create transformational results in life. And that's why, you know, I, I truly felt the, that design has the power to transform. And uh, right. so... Let's move on to our next slide. I've got a couple of more slides to show. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, sure. So if you look at these initiatives um, uh, that we've gotten together is, um, of uh, building an institution, uh, we initiated a Women Mentors Forum in the city in the year, uh, you know, around six to seven years back. Having been uh, exposed to international programs like the International Women Leaders, partnership program of the U.S. State Department, the Fortune Magazine, and Vital Voices Global Partnerships. So I was mentored by Fortune CEOs. Uh, I stayed in Manhattan for a year. 
um, uh, my exposure for almost a decade with uh, Rotary International, having visited Geneva, stayed in Switzerland for five weeks. Uh, it was an amazing um, journey in terms of uh, the expansion of the horizon. Uh, you know, I mean, it's very important to build on one's vision. And uh, I remember in the year 2000, when I started the institution, I just felt the need of going globally to study something. So I went to De Montfort University to do, do a course in contour design. And can you imagine making intimate wear, intimate apparels, nobody even talked about it in the country. I went, I had to learn intimate apparels. And I, I remember having sewn a few there during right. the program as well. So in this whole process, I think it's very important to build one's vision. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a designer is an explorer, uh, a discoverer, you know, a, a learner for lifelong because there are no solutions, there are no right or wrong answers to it. And right. you have to constantly be in the environment to be able to find solutions that will be relevant, that will be meaningful. And uh, within all these, we created the ARCH welfare initiatives. Our scholarships are there to provide solutions, uh, you know, for, uh, you know, single parent or people from the, you know, army, you know, background or yeah. people from non-binary background as well. So, uh, you know, there are great amount of scholarships this year. This year we have, especially because of COVID, there's a lot of uh, the business environment has been impacted drastically. So we have given a scholarship up to four lakh rupees to artisan families, to people from these backgrounds or people who have gone through these kind of challenges. Our campus to company initiative and our design alumni association. Uh, these are a couple of more initiatives that we do to connect with our stakeholders. And uh, I'm very proud that, you know, the, the design business incubator that uh, we established three years back, our students, we inspire them to create their business ideas. Because today is the world when, you know, we're not going to be job seekers. You know, we, we got to think as job, job givers. And uh, our incubator has the best of people, resources, our connections with the CII, the Thai, the Thai, Thai Rajasthan, which is the Thai Global Initiative of the Thai Global. So tomorrow you're going to hear Mahavir Sharma, who's the Thai Global uh, trustee and who's just served as the former president of Thai Global. Uh, he's going to be speaking to us tomorrow on uh, social and sustainable entrepreneurship and the conscious uh, you know, businesses that are required. So these are a couple of initiatives that we have initiated to bring forth, you know, our, what we believe in. Yeah. Can we have the next slide, Mega? So I was talking about collaboration and co-creation. So uh, today for the first time, I really actually use the Swiss Development Cooperation Project. At times, you know, we move on and we forget that, you know, uh, in my language, I would see that, but uh, as we moved on, we actually did a lot of projects, uh, whether it was with the British Council, the UK India Education Research Initiative project, or with the European Network on Cultural Management and Policy, we did a nine country tour. And we had, uh, you know, um, uh, out of those nine countries at India at, you know, Arch College hosted this uh, uh, cultural government. Yeah of a publication which you should figure it out it's available on amazon as well and uh, last year we did a great research colloquium and uh, um, the idea was to look at responsible fashion and uh, we opened the series on responsible fashion year in india and which was initially started with the four big ones which was like ul parsons and domus and ifm paris but uh, looking at new emerging locations we went on to take on the responsible fashion series yeah. And it was the, you know, it was Mahatma Gandhi's, uh, you know, celebrations and celebrations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so interestingly, these were a couple of developments. And then along the way, we worked closely with uh, MSME, the Micro Small Medium Enterprise, the De Development Commissioner Handicrafts, the Khadi Board of Rajasthan, and with the rural non-farm development agencies, looking at different rural projects, community projects, and seeing the real-time use of design in these arenas. So I'm going to go back to the Swiss Development Cooperation Project. That's where my journey started. If right. this didn't come into my life, I wouldn't have been sitting on this chair here, right? Yeah. And, uh, so I have some uh, great memories. So it was a value addition on textiles program. 
Uh, and uh, I had brought in then, I didn't have the resources, so I brought in resources from Singer. They helped me with the machines and things. And I got a small funding from SDC and that was a kickstart for my career. Right. And it was a long waiting journey for six months where I had to keep a lot of patience and perseverance. I think that's also part of the design journey. And I think uh, every designer has to see that, you know, at times you may not find solutions to it, to right. your problems. But, you know, you've got to keep the patience and you've got to have that perseverance that you believe in yourself that you're going to make it possible. Right. And uh, that's when, you know, we had, sh you know, the collaboration with Shopperstop and all that really gotten together. And this is where we are today as a global institution. So we did the Jaipur by Night fashion show at the City Palace with the CII, did the Jaipur Metro Uniform Project, you know, creating almost 58 pieces in different verticals uh, for the different level of staffing. So interestingly, all these projects have enriched the level of learning of our students, our faculty, you know. So we've really evolved with these partnerships. Next. Yeah. So interestingly, so let's get back to Arch again. Huh? And uh, so while we talked about our values, how it has actually helped us evolve yeah. with our community, yeah. with our people, with our global partners. Uh, uh, the foundation of design is what we stand on, right? And while business is what we drive, the research is the, you know, is the, is the, out of the box kind of thing, but which is just taking us design. ahead uh, in these times. So today, when we look at the whole designability thing, which we've been doing for years, we've been reaching out to our people, to uh, younger people who actually can uh, carry this uh, uh, this uh, intention of design forward. And when I talk about design, I, as I really I shared, you know that it's a very holistic way of learning and it help, it's transformational in nature. So we feel that the ability is very, very important. So I would like uh, to again have you go through the session of Bhargav sir here because uh, that, would, that has addressed designability as what we intend doing here at Arch and we've already initiated a lot of uh, dialogues with school principals, to teachers, to young people. And we've interacted with them, whether they're management graduates or engineering students, you know, I mean, there's a huge potential for everybody to understand what, how design thinking and not just thinking, you got to nurture that ability and how that ability can be nurtured and one can get results, which could be uh, more meaningful and relevant. So are you creating solutions? Yes which are going to address the real time challenges of this planet, right? And while we have the, you know, the SDGs with the sustainable development goals, which are there, we have the, um, you know, these are a lot of directions which are available to us, but at the foundation level, it all starts again with the self. How much is the self understanding the importance of these, uh, you know, these SDGs? And uh, if design and design thinking and design method, uh, if these kind of learnings can help us all un understand that what truly empathizing would mean. I think somewhere we have not even understood in terms of what truly empathizing is and identifying the problem in its reality, in its true essence, you know? So that's where the creation actually starts. So. Uh, you know, I mean, our business uh, is all about creating a lean design management institution and each and every staff here at Arch is trained into lean, into design, lean design management. Uh, they have been through all the principles, the Japanese principles of Kaizen to Kaikaku to, you know, the 5S to the PDCA, uh, the customer delight, you know, these are certain principles. I think they're very core to the Indian philosophy as well, because I see that, you know, the Japanese philosophy and the Indian philosophy is very, very close to each other. I, what I am truly standing for is today decolonizing of design. And why I call it decolonizing of design is somewhere, uh, I think um, when we look at business, uh, we always see that the Western world 
is the one who has actually spearheaded and uh, have been the business leaders on the planet, right? And how can India be at this level where it's not about, again, copying them, aping them. It's just about learning from the best practices of each other. But we've got to really understand that the business values and the ethics of Indian uh, origin, the Vedic culture that we have, uh, it has it all in it. And all the answers lie there. So can we, there's a huge opportunity for India to look at our own indigenous knowledge, our heritage, and see that while the world has come to us to learn all this, you know, right from Mark Zuckerberg to, you know, Bill Gates to people, we know of these stories that they have visited India, they have learned here on this part of the, you know, this land where we call ourselves the golden bird. Uh, you know, we were known not as a, you know, a golden bird because uh, uh, we had, you know, a lot of riches in terms of, uh, you know, gold or silver or mines or whatever the minerals that we had or the resources. We were here known because we were a center of learning. And Nalanda, where we had, uh, you know, Hoinsang, who actually came here to learn. He came in as a scholar. He waited for years to get admission at uh, Nalanda University. And then in his, uh, uh, you know, texts uh, that Lord Cunningham, when he uh, did the excavation and found out about Nalanda University, that he excavated the, you know, the whole university in 1916. And can you see that, you know, that's where in the, you know, the scriptures and whatever of Hoang Sang that he found out. So can you imagine the kind of uh, legacy this land holds? And we cannot forget that we are in a world of energy today. And when we talk about today energy, this is the land where there is so immense energy of learning, wisdom that's available. Have we been, as young people, been able to harness that energy? So I think that's an opportunity that I see both at the level of research and business and design. And uh, uh, yesterday I was just going through this post on LinkedIn and it said this lady who was known as um, uh, um, some amma, uh, she was 106 years old and she, uh, she, she had what, almost two lakh followers. Yeah. And uh, she used to create these authentic, uh, you know, dishes and, um, so uh, somebody called the dosa, I mean, the dosa that we have right. in the Indian, as a, like a French crepe. No? So right. said, why do you have to call, not have the dosa called a dosa? While we have the, uh, the sushi called a sushi, right? And why is it that we are not standing for this, that the Indian understanding of a certain word is in an Indian context and it has to be used in that, in right. that true sense. So when we talk about the whole idea of sense, sensing, sensibility, sensitivity, you know, it's very, very important to understand that, you know, each culture has its beauty. And that is the beauty that we all need to cherish rather than just, uh, you know, seeing what's, you know, okay. aping somebody else. So yeah. I think uh, it's a great time for India to look at decolonizing of design and just learn from the best practices of the world. So right, right. when we've started to look at research, yes, our, can we take on to the next slide of EAD? Uh, so uh, EAD, uh, the All India Entrance Examination for Design. Uh, yes, India has a, okay, before I go with EAD, let's talk about the dream to drive funnel. Mega, you can go on to that, yeah. So when we're talking about the business uh, thing, so I have been on a lot of international programs and uh, right from being from Rotary to, uh, you know, uh, the Vital Voices Global Partnerships and uh, um, going through a lot of uh, transformational le level programs that I've been on to, I have realized that's very important to have your dream first in place. You know, we have a lot of dreams, but you know, that really that dream, that big dream that inspires you. And I, when I was seeing as my dream, I, I realized that, you know, uh, the dream to be self-reliant, you know, to be independent to, was very important for me as a woman. And it was very important that I live up to the values of the Indian um, ecosystem where we have the Ardhanarishwar, we have the male and the female who are complementing energies and not competing. 
So we are in a world where men and women are competing at that, this point of time. And we are actually complementing forces. And it's very, it was important for me to have that identity of a woman as, as, as another human being, as another male member. Hmm? So that's where my dream started. And that dream actually inspired me to be, you know, have my own business, have my own standing. And that's what I encourage in every uh, staff member and every student, right. you know, right. but see what is that dream on you? We, pe the people who have come together with me together, are, we all have this, probably we all have a similar dream and that's why we are together. So let's live that dream together. Mm -hmm. It's not about you doing your job. It's not about you taking a, you know, a employment for just a livelihood. Your employment is eight hours of your day. That's your life. And you need to fulfill in your big dream in those eight hours. So eight hours is a rest time. Eight hours is a family time. And eight hours is a professional time when we are fulfilling our dreams and how we are manifesting it in the world. So it's very important to have, uh, have distinguished that big dream and uh, see how our vision gets shaped up. So vision is all about discovery. You have to constantly throw yourself into situations which are going to challenge you. You know, I mean, you've got to increase your bandwidth. The bandwidth, why I say is that if, people, if there are not enough challenges, throw these challenges to yourself and create, that, you know, and be constantly on that uh, you know, that uh, journey of discovery. And that's when the vision grows. And with the vision, if you don't have the values, the values is like a strainer, you know, all the things which are not wanted will stay back in the strainer. Right. And only the things that are required will actually move out. So you have these forwarding beliefs, right? We have beliefs which are both limiting and forwarding. So if you can look at your beliefs that are forwarding your intent and put them into your value system, and just have, just take some, take actions alongside. So that will be meaningful in terms of how you can live a life of values. So then again, what comes important is purpose. So if the purpose is again, not clear, why are we doing this? The who, when, why, what, where, these are certain questions you have to answer to yourself. What is the objective that you want to fulfill? What is the purpose for this work? And if one can actually distinguish that ongoingly, I think it's an inquiry and one has to constantly be into that state stage of inquiry. Now, if you've been able to do all this, yes, do write your mission, create certain pathways. And in this whole process, you will have to look at certain short-term and long-term goals. I somewhere felt that in the year 2012, I was in a state where I, my goals were not in place. I went through a major breakdown. And that's the point of time when I had a mentor in my life. My mentor is a media entrepreneur and she's a media icon in the United States. Her name is Geraldine Levon. She's the lady, she was the one who founded the Oxygen Media along with Oprah Winfrey. I see. And, and when she came into my life and for a five days, we were together on the Global Ambassadors Program, which was uh, sponsored by Bank of America and the Vital Voices Global Partnerships. That's when she again realigned me to actually put my short-term, mid-term and long-term goals together. And I feel a mentor is a great, uh, is very important in your life because you have to have somebody whom you can talk to you know, constantly revisit your purpose, your mission, your goals together. Okay. And goals is all about creating these milestones. So yes, uh, in the while, while you are uh, having goals, you will go through breakdowns as well. And breakdowns is a part of the journey. So anybody who's seeing that failure should not come in, I'm sorry, failures, whether you like it or not, they are going to be coming alongside. So the beauty is in, uh, if you can, I uh, create a plan where you uh, you have calculated failures. I think one is at a best place to, otherwise you definitely can have a different path then. So not to be fearful of failures. So I think probably design has, uh, you know, design will teach you that, yeah. That yeah. at times you've been so passionate about your design, your idea, but you've seen that it has just not worked and people have not accepted it. Mm -hmm. So don't be disheartened. There's a learning attached to it. So I, I think at every stage, there's a learning and one should 
they open to it. So look at your targets, you know, these are certain measures that you can put. So be very smart about it, specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic, and be time bound, right? So if you can look at these couple of measures, uh, it might be helpful for you. And then again, I say, you know, keep your attention on your intention. Because the moment you've lost, you've done it all, right? You've put gone through all the stages. Mm -hmm. But if you've lost your attention on your intention, that's where the gap is. Mm -hmm. And today the world is going, you know, research is saying that people are going through this major, uh, you know, this is a, like a, alongside COVID, it's a universal crisis that the world is going through, which is people are losing out on focus. Right, right, right. And people are being overwhelmed. Mm. You know, they're feeling the inability where we are talking about design ability, right? So if you feel that you are not able right now, get into design ability and that's, and get into the focus. So maybe that could be a new start for you. So I would, all the owners goes completely to Bhargav sir to take on these courses with us, yeah. So, <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, it's uh, it's very well connected. You see, when, when I see the arch pyramid of uh, research, business design, and then the mission of, say, uh, empowering, co-creating, evolving, and then when we fill it up with these little details, it, it just leads you to the path of design culture. And if this is the way to infuse it into the... Uh, into the uh, you know, uh, to to you know aspiring design student uh, design students not just students even even mentors or just it becomes a way of life and uh, I think this is a very inspirational dialogue I mean uh, I, I I would really wish you please go on for a while and and Thank tell you, us sir. a little more yeah so you know again having your attention on your intention is very key. And I strongly feel delight comes, delight is some, a word that I love, you know. And I say, if it does not bring delight, then it's not design. Because, you know, I mean, there is everything in it, right? You've done everything about it. But at the end, it has to actually arouse your senses. You know, it has to bring that emotional connect. The emotional connect only comes with the delight aspect of it. So remember that if your design is not bringing delight, you know, I mean, uh, there are few people who might see the mechanics of it and get delighted. The few will see the form of it and get delighted. The few will look at the beauty in it. The few will look at the process that you have uh, used in creating it. So delight can be at various levels. So that is what one needs to constantly look at, how to bring in that delight factor inside the whole design process. So yeah. the importance is that the dream has to deliver. If the dream does not deliver, you know, what is it? It's illusion. Yeah. Would you like to be in a state of illusion? I think we don't want to be called as illusionary people. We want to be known as real people who made a difference. And how do we do that? So the dream has the power to deliver. And if you don't have this, this is out of my experience of 22 years at ART, and my journey of almost 28 years as a practitioner, as a professional, that I've put these thoughts together to build this dream to drive funnel. funnel. So yeah. Yeah. I hope uh, people can find some meaning in this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let's get on to the next one, Mega. Yeah. So while we did talk about uh, the vertex, uh, you know, the design at the base. Uh, as students, we tell them to first look at their dream, look at the self, right? Uh, because everything starts at the level of the self. Even if you want to go and think of a big, uh, you know, transformation you want to bring on the planet, consider plastic waste you don't want to make, right? So start from with your own homes. Are you using plastic? Are you throwing plastic on the streets? Are you not consuming plastic in the right way? Are you conscious? aware of the choices that you're making in your own buying. So that's where it all starts with the self, right? And it's very important. I think we've got discovered twice, probably, and never mind. So it's very important to continually discover then that what is one, what connects with, what is one inspired by? 
and then we have an environment which actually whether we like it or not so if you have a plan to drive your dream you better have it otherwise others are going to push you into it right so better have your own uh, you know uh, uh, you know your own uh, plan that you've made to drive your own dream mm. and there is an environment see for an environment that could be that can help you that can be conducive it could be people it could be resources it could be anything just figure out all those things that will help you drive your dream now then again i said that you know it's very important to keep your attention to be able to deliver if you're not able to deliver i think that's where you know most of the people face uh, you know criticism they face uh, challenges they are not able to cope up so how can we bring that kind of attention to our work yes today the digital media has put in lot of pressure on us you know uh, we are being on the social media you checking your whatsapp all the time you looking at your facebook are we meant to do this we will have all the choices now we have so many choices now it's the time to really look at what choices you are going to make for yourself Yes. so that's where you are going to bring in delight hmm. yes. so to be able to focus on delight would require you to make great choices and with delight comes lot of beauty and aesthetics and i think we in, in in nature we all seek beauty we go to distant places to look at landscapes whether it's the seaside or the mountains we go and try and see that beauty around then what nature has given us and i think as human beings we are a part of nature we equally have the power to create beauty and that is the beauty that i talk about when i talk about the you know the 5d model and when you look at the 5d 360 degree this is the uh, this is the design model that we have used here at arch to make sure that our students are driven from dream to their delight kind of and the delight and aesthetics is also based on the five senses itself i mean all five senses right so let's have the next slide yeah. okay so as sir said uh, you know the whole uh, culture of harmonious learning that we are trying here at arch to inculcate in every learner here is the sense the design sense so first it comes with our five senses that we have right and then you know there is a sensitivity to it there is a deeper sensibility that uh, is there so with sense comes lot of sensing and uh, for sensing you require lot of awareness now so what we do what do we do here at arch we have uh, you know anapan meditation this is a mindfulness meditation that we do every day for 10 minutes before the beginning of the day and this we have been practicing for the last 7 years every student every staff member begins his day with anapan meditation which is to focus on your own breath your breath is your lifeline you know i mean if you can stay with yourself for 10 year 10 minutes i think you can stay with anything and everything there's a great amount of tolerance there's a great amount of patience that we learn in the school process so it's very important how you can actually nurture your senses you know at times become so overwhelmed that you know our senses become almost immune you know today we have so much of visual delight that we become immune to our senses you know our eyes can't really see a lot of beauty around us because there's so much of uh you know the rush of you know visual uh, culture that is actually absorbing us so how do we keep our senses energized how do we keep them alive now for if our senses are alive can we only be sensitive now if sensitivity is important for design how do we nurture this sensitivity now if we talking about empathy empathy is just not a word empathy has a deeper level of work to be done with it at this deeper level of work requires a huge amount of courage and life throws you in experiences where we lose out on our sensitivity at times we lose out in the in our ability to sense so if that's where that's where the challenge is how do we keep ourselves sensitive now if that's in, that's again important for design 
then the sensibility. What is going to be relevant and appropriate? Appropriate technology, appropriate resources, appropriate team. I mean, everything is what is has to get together to be able to create a design that will be usable. We all know that, you know, art and design goes hand in hand, right? In the West, if you look at the departments, they are known as art and design department. It's, it's a, a bit sad that in, in, in India, we have seen design more as technology or we want to see it as skill, uh, you know, but it, it is art, it is beauty. It is beauty with a purpose. And the, when the purpose is there, and the relevance is there, the user base is there, that, that's when it becomes design, right? So I think that sensibility is very important to understand that we are not creating out of one design solution, are we creating another 10 more design problems? Right. right. So that sensibility is very key to understand that each and every human being, I know that yes, uh, we've been through the industrial revolution, which has had its own merits and demerits. Today, we are talking about digital wars. We are in, this, we are in a climate of bio wars right now. And I have been seeing information on the, you know, on the internet talking about the digital war. There were you know, big uh, you know, companies which were hacked right from banking systems, things which have, we are being hacked right now. So how are we creating solutions is it on one side of the at one part in one part of the world we are talking about being using more lesser and less right the fashion industry is specifically aiming at talking about the use of you know less talking about slow fashion talking about slow design and on the other hand we are going faster and faster with the digital revolution so here as the japanese have coined uh, society 5.0. Yes, uh, Pink City Design Conference is going to address this area. So if we are talking about society, what would the society look like? Is it again about power games? Is it about, again about territories? Is it again about countries and boundaries? Or is it going to be a boundaryless world? Right? So there are a lot of new areas of introspection and thought process. So who, who are going to do all these thinking for us? They're going to be design-led leaders who are truly empathetic, who have the courage to stand by. While we have already shaped the world, today COVID has actually put that whole system to a question mark. Yes, indeed. So again, let's go back to our own self, the self and the senses. So how do we keep nurturing them and our sensitivity and our sensibility? Let's go on to the next one. Uh, the next slide, uh, Mega. Yeah, that's it. So at Arch, we have certain pathways, right? And we look at uh, you know creating a feedback and a feed forward mechanism that ensures that we are constantly in touch with our people and understand that they are able to communicate with us effectively. And, uh, and we have that, the power of listening, the, to listen in between the lines and come out with solutions. It's very important to look at accountability. You know, yeah. responsibility is more collective. Accountability is very individual oriented. And when people are not clear about their accountabilities, I think every student, every learner has to feel responsible that what are they accountable for as a learner? What are they going to become as designers? Who are they going to become once they move out of this course? Are they being responsible towards themselves? The ability to respond is the, uh, which we call as responsibility. As we said, the ability to design is known as design ability. So accountability is when you have your own account in your hand and you know that you are answerable. That's what we call as accountability. And a contribution. So how do we keep contributing? The contribution is through sharing. You know, we have ideas that we can share. We can nurture ideas. So it's very important to continually participate and contribute. I'm just going to share a small story here because when I was in my humble, you know, very those initial days of, just starting in a two to three room setup and it's, it had just been three to four months. 
And we had this all Rajasthan jewelry design competition, which was launched. And uh, the, it had been just two to three months and the students said, oh ma'am, it's too early to participate in a competition. I said, participation is more important than winning. And can you imagine we backed the first, the second, the third, all three awards, we won prizes. And out of six consolation, three consolation were won by our students. Wow. So overall, we had six out of nine. Year after year, our jewelry design department won awards after awards and awards. We became the best in the country. Today, our students are placed with the topmost brands in the country who are serving as international level brands. Talk about Amrapali to Aura Jewels to, you know, right from Hollywood actresses wearing their designs. So that's where it's important to participate. So I, I just like to again mention that uh, two years back when Cumulus actually initiated this uh, competition talking about what would luxury look like in 2070? Can you imagine? So the committee Colbert, which is a, um, which is a consortia of the luxury brands from France, they put together this competition along with a couple of institutions, right? Like uh, 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 from Paris. And uh, so our students, we bagged number three there. So we talked about a utopian world where said emotions are going to be rare. And it's very important to participate because participation, uh, you know, because this brings a global context available to you. It's very important to be at the local level and think at the global level. And that's what becomes possible with, you know, active contribution and participation on international forums. So our partner institutions like IFTI, the International Fa uh, Foundation for Fashion Technology Institutions, the World Design Organization, Cumulus, these are very strong bodies of design with member base of, you know, around 200, 250 design, uh, you know, design media architecture institutions from across the globe. And they throw out these competitions and participation every year. And we are encouraging our students to constantly participate in the form of research paper projects. Uh, I remember at the non, um, uh, you know, the non, uh, it, it, they have changed the name there. So our students were selected for the University of Antwerp and their three of their research papers were selected there. Uh, we have another um, uh, thing that we've done just right now. We've created an installation which is 25 feet long, which is known as the changing room. It is going for the responsible fashion series at Antwerp. And these are a couple of contributions that I'm just, uh, you know, one can always see on the website. About us. So it's very important to be constantly oriented and inducted again and again, because as human beings, we come from different backgrounds and we, we tend to fall back into a conditioned way of being. So if we want to follow a mission, we need to ensure that, you know, we are constantly orienting and inducting ourselves. And uh, whether it is our team members, our staff members, our students, and it's important to look at benchmarking again, because our placements, because everybody is, uh, you know, looking for, comp you know, business growth, right? One is looking at creating a professional career. So it's very important to look at benchmarking. Uh, what kind of uh, a person I am and what kind of, uh, who's going to be my employer? Where does my dream fit into? Can I fulfill the dream of my employer too? So I think that mindset is very, very important in terms of looking at whether you want to become an entrepreneur or you want to become a, you know, a design professional or a design manager or whosoever you want to be. So it's very important to look at what is my standard and what is my quality benchmarking and where do I best fit into. So these are certain pathways that we have very clearly defined for our team members and our students to look at so that we can together move forward with velocity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah indeed. So when we talk about our research base, so uh, can we have this on, Mega? So while we did talk about research, yes, 10 years of research has gone into looking at who our learners are gonna be, right? Is everybody, uh, you know, do you have an aptitude for design? Is design meant for everybody? Or is design meant for a few people who are keen in a particular way of thinking and doing? If you are not, we have Bhargav sir there for us, 
who will take you through the journey of creating your design ability so that you can take up a career in design. So if you are at a school level or at a college level, or you have taken on education in some other path or stream because your father said, first do your graduation before you can think of design. Design is, you know, it's a fancy career or maybe, you know, you might have heard certain things like this, right? And they see that there are not enough possibilities there. But yes, today the Western world has made the most of design and design thinking. And as, as a nation today, we have an opportunity to look at how design can actually transform the way our country is operating today. How governance can really look at design, how our businesses can look at design leadership. There has to be a designer in every wing, I mean, I feel, because designers think differently and they bring great value. Today, we're talking about, you know, the diversity on boards, right? So we have women on boards. That's a great thing to do. But I think we need to also look at designers on boards. We need to have a design professional on a business board to make sure that we have this kind of a thinking that comes in, which is completely from a perspective, which is not available to most of us at most of the times. So when we are looking at, looking at our learners, we, we have asked them to create a portfolio of their own abilities. <coughs> Now, this is not a portfolio that you go to a coaching institution and you get to learn a couple of sheets on sketching to 3D to orthographic to some, uh, you know, product making and put in a portfolio. No, we're not talking about this because this is not what will make you a designer. What will make you a designer is your own abilities first. So you create your own portfolio the way you want it, right? What expresses you fully as a human being? And then you can share it with us and we would just give you a feedback because there's nothing right or wrong, right? What is important is that we want to know you more and more before we have you in with us. So that's where we call it the portfolio of abilities. Now, we now this the, the another stage is the psychological endowments for design. Hmm? Now, as a human being, again, we said that, you know, each one of us has nurtured, we come from different backgrounds, we have our different learnings, and we are very interested in those learnings of yours. So what are these endowments that you have with you? We would like to nurture them to the best so that you can then take it up and you can become designers with that distinct ability to become change makers. So that's where, you know, uh, you can appear for the... Um, psychological endowments and see that, you know, how this can be shared with us. Similarly, on the other hand, we have the comprehensive awareness, thinking, articulation, ability that you have. So if you look at how do you comprehend? Are you aware enough? Are you thinking enough? Are you articulate enough? So you've got to create certain amazing videos. I was going through one of these videos. She's a beautiful girl from Seeker. Oh, wow. You know, she's got this uh, very colloquial accent. But wow, how hilarious. She was like almost like a stand-up comedian. She was so beautiful in the way she narrated, how she did the small little videos of the exercises that we gave her. So, I mean, if one had to just see her as somebody, we would be judgmental. But the depth that she had, that she exhibited in that small video was... I mean, it was so inspiring for, I mean, I was inspired by her. I would love to have such students who are so original in their way of thinking and doing. Yeah. So here comes again a statement of purpose. As we talked about, your purpose is very, very important. What do you want to, what do you want to build? What do you want to do? I mean, we are interested in you. So that's why we want all these things from you. So, and then we want to have an interaction with you. We want to hear you out. We want to hear your ideas. Because design is all about ideas. And if we have the best of ideas here, do you think we're going to be lacking anywhere? No, not at all. We are together going to move with velocity. You know, India, people say we don't have thinkers here. We don't have innovators here. Sorry, that's not true. The truth is that we are a land of innovators. And the only thing is we've been very generous and giving it out, you know. And we've not patented it. We've not done our you know, our, you know, those IP, you know, the intellectual property, the ownership of it. We've been generous. We've given it out to the world and said, okay, come on, we've got the idea. Take it. You nurture it and build it further. So it's very interesting that, yes, now we have an opportunity that we can also do it because if that is being valued in the world, why not show it that way as well? So um, uh, the whole idea is to now, again, 
start with the self. So that's what the intent of the entrance exam. So 10 years, we've done deep research. I want to give credit to um, Binoy Thumpunkal, who's now our director international. For 10 years, he has worked deeply into this area to look at what our learners want, what is the kind of people who are actually, you know, going to become designers are going to build. So I, I, I this is a very, this is a serious uh, affair because a lot of young people, they come into design because either they feel that somebody has, uh, you know, it is nice to do it or they're not good enough in their, uh, in their academics that they think that design is okay for them, or they feel it's a certain skill. Yes, it's all there, but you have to understand that if you are coming into design, your responsibility is very big. You are not going to be a generalist. You are going to be a specialist. You are gonna make a difference. You are going to lead the path. You are gonna be a change maker. That's the responsibility you've got to take if you're coming into a design profession. Otherwise, this career is not for you. If you are looking at being a conformist, design is not the path for you. If you are looking at being a leader, if you're looking at creating new benchmarks, design is the career pathway for you. And that's where I want to say that learners, please hear this out very uh, beautifully because your career choice is very, very important for us because we are investing ourselves with you and you are investing your time with us. So your focus is very, very important because designers are the people who are the leaders on the planet. And people, even if they've not learned design, a lot of people are, everybody is practicing design, but in their own way. And I think we need to acknowledge that design has the power to transform. And if you are coming in as a learner, your intention, your clarity, your focus, your dedication, your uh, ability to sense, the discovery that you have to constantly be into, the inquiry that you have to be into, you got to challenge yourself all the time. You got to see new situations. You got to look at opportunities. That's where design happens. And if you love this kind of a space, design is the place for you. Uh, do you have the next slide or am I done with it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Bhargav said I've done a lot of talking, so it would be... Oh, well. <laughs> this no, no, but I, I think um, uh, we, we've really gone through such an immensely insightful journey of what it takes, what it takes to, to you know, create, to, to so-called... Uh, you know, design leadership, design culture, through designability, through so many aspects that you really ran us through. And uh, it has been very uh, insight, uh, in, insightful and um, uh, inspirational also. And I'm sure all the viewers here would feel the same. Now, coming to the aspect of, um, uh, you know, design culture at, uh, uh, at Arch, see, like Arshna Ji mentioned that we, we began the whole thing with a designability program, you know, where we take the ability to say, have design sense and sensibility to even schools. Now, this program, it's, we've, we've already embarked upon and it, we, we are, uh, we invite also experts from the field, we have design culture dialogues. So even that set of uh, 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 the, the sessions we have, uh, you know, are done, and uh, followed by the design uh, uh, culture learning series, which we are currently. Now all these things uh, will ultimately confluence into the pink city design confluence scheduled in January. Now, this is again part of the design culture building. Now, where we have so many exciting um, events, right from, uh, you know, research papers, uh, like uh, we'll have dialogue series, learnings. I mean, yet this we have, uh, uh, Mega, if you can go to the 
next slide i'd like to you know talk about uh, yes in the uh, design dialogue series that we earlier had uh, we had professor pradyum navyas we had alok nandi satish gokhale all these are prominent people in the field of design and they shared their uh, their thoughts and ideas inspiring all of us followed by we had um, uh, uh, sandeep said ji then we had uh, pramod uh, and then pramod uh, sharma ji and manish jain uh, can we go to the next slide this was part of the design dialogue series now in the learning series we which um, has been going on this is the fourth week the first week was on creativity where we had uh mr yunus kemani uh talking about uh you know the influence of art movement on design then we had uh, anurag singhal on the process of creativity we had binoy uh again on uh, creation what is creation and we had satish gokhale about uh, the complexities the hidden complexities behind uh, successful product design now this entire series was also again very very uh, so called uh, it was a great learning for all uh then uh the theme was uh, after that society 5.0 where again we had prominent speakers uh we had uh, uh mr vikram uh, joshi followed by in uh, he, uh, he talked about uh, community and uh, habitat then we had uh, jinan in uh, imagining education reimagining education we had lakshmi murthy talking about design for a purpose and uh, in creativity now this is very interesting creativity in medical science by uh, dr uh, 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 dr vishal right vishal ra can we shift to the next slide please and this was followed by the um, harmonious livability where your stooli was the first speaker on the fifth of uh, uh on 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 design uh, designability on the 5th of uh, june uh, uh, uh july sorry and then we had kiran beer um prominent educationist from andhabad of the riverdale school riverside school then we had dinesh kojan followed by vanmala vanmala spoke about uh, she's a ceramist and uh, she's done a lot of social work through design and today we have um, arshna ji who has spoken uh, to us about um, uh, design culture and all the nuances as it goes in building design culture in institutions of design and so many other aspects tomorrow we will have uh, mr mahavir sharma and uh, followed by ashish desh pande on uh, thursday that is the 15th on um, again uh, his journey in in you know design uh, uh, leadership and after that we have professor pradyum navyas on india design so i would really um you know uh, not just request it be really exciting to go through all these uh, so that later uh, can we have the next slide please uh right okay so i think this will ultimately you know we will be leading uh, into the pink city design conference which i think uh, arshna ji would like to speak about the pcdc the pink city design conference because we uh, uh, uh we are calling for research papers in this we are calling for um, uh, installations uh, uh and uh, there are interesting events like uh the uh, design story you know which may touch you move you inspire you it will be in form of reels or photographs or illustrations then uh, there will be a design uh, 
uh, design a font yeah. just like a, um, yeah there we have the the uh, slides here so can you go to the next one please so that people can have a look uh, you know having visual as well as audio is far better way of uh, uh, the theme of course as the theme has always been you've been seeing for the last three weeks form reform and transform can you go to the next one please in which there are sub themes of Society 5.0, creativity, design leadership, and harmonious livability. Again, this is how the design uh, culture uh, learning series has been, uh, you know, we have uh, planned it. And if you can go further, call for contributions. Now, research papers, digit posters, installations, and there are, of course, final, um, the, the, there are some dates for this also. If you can, like, say, 15th, uh, June 31st, August. So, you know, the website will tell you all the details if you go through the um, um, information in here. And I, I, I really feel um, anyone who is in this field or even uh, in any field uh, connected with any other domains, be it in engineering, be it in education, be it in sciences, in design, architecture, wherever, I mean, this should be uh, 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 really an exciting platform to participate on. Can you move to the next one, please? Design Culture Awards. Now, that's another exciting event which will be part of this uh, Pink City uh, Design uh, Confluence. Can we go further? So, there'll be exciting prizes in this. Uh, prizes in this. There'll be good awards and uh, uh, the categories being uh, 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 digital design, uh, fi uh, digital design, digital design, and industrial design. So anything which you feel can fall under this, you can participate in. Then there are the details of uh, dates and uh, further, please. Uh, next slide. That's another interesting competition that I talked about, design story, something which touches you, moves you, inspires you, and you can record it, you can document it, you can uh, present it with um, uh, different, uh, in, in, in different uh, ways, in, uh, through photography, through reels, through, you know, illustration. So all, all the details you'll find of that. So um, um, uh, uh, what's the next uh, slide, please? Yes. And then, of course, the, so uh, you can stop. Oh, design a thon uh, on the 18th. This will be an exciting 24 hour event, you know, like hackathons, uh, design a thon. So, what we have in there for you will be a great surprise. So, don't miss out on this either. Um, I think you can stop sharing the screen now. Uh, thank you for sharing that. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd really, you know, urge that uh, every participant every uh, you, everyone in this domains different domains can you know participate in this and it has been such an honor to have Arshna ji with us today who ran us through the entire you know um, the, the build up of how how an institution based on design culture is formed, reformed, and slowly transforming into it. So I would like you, Arshnaji, to have some parting, word, parting words uh, before we, uh, uh, you know, sign off from the session. Let's see if there are any uh, questions in the meantime, please. Um, uh, shall I run through the question first? So it's from Mumal Shekhawat. Good afternoon, ma'am and sir. Are these learning series classes? I'm really interested in contributing research paper for this. From you. Can we have a teach? Sure, of course. So this was more than a question, I'd say. Just um, you know, give her the details. So Arshnaji, would you like to please come back with the, uh, some party lines? Remember, you had a couple of questions that you wanted to ask. Are they all answered or they're still there? You know what? I was... <laughs> Your um, delivery in terms of your thoughts, in terms everything, basically, shall we say, it snowballed into all the questions that I had. 
Now, suppose, for instance, my one of my questions was, what is the difference between uh, a leader and a design leader? Design leadership. Leadership, design leadership. I think when you presented some of the slides, especially, you know, that um, pyramid bit, and then the uh, from um, uh, you know, uh, dream to drive uh, this thing, funnel. Uh, but I would still like, if you have something to say in that, you know, differentiation between say, because they have common characteristics, but something differentiates them. Right. So uh, while we know that, uh, you know, the world has had amazing leaders mm -hmm. and I, I somewhere see them as designers too, because they have paved the path for a new way of thinking and doing. Right. If you look at uh, Mahatma Gandhi and uh, if you look at his leadership model, it was very futuristic. Mm -hmm. It was it was completely addressing a future for this nation. He didn't know whether the country would get freedom or not. So a, a leader is somebody who at times, you know, you are, uh, you know, you lead, you we have a politicians who are leaders, right? They do lead certain frontiers, but they may not be design leaders. Design leaders have a greater vision, a greater vision of shaping a future. And I, they have a certain road roadmap for it. They right. have certain philosophies attached to that. Right. They have a certain value system that actually nurtures it and they go through larger challenges. And uh, indeed, it can be in any domain. Design leadership can be even in the domain of, uh, say, medicine. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. That's and, uh, I think it's important now to not look at only leadership, but one has to look at design-led leadership, yes. which is, can be nurtured by, which can be used by as an entrepreneur, by a politician, by the government officials. It can be used, you know, if one, maybe few people have done it, right? But have you ever tried to actually look at it from a design leadership point of view? Yeah. So yeah. that's very that's where I feel is an opportunity for us to distinguish yeah. how design can nurture a different level of sensibility mm -hmm. and sensitivity in a leader. True. Now uh, you know this brings me to yet another thought, which uh, which is this that see when we try to do something like this when it is when when you know when we are trying to bring in sensibility sensitivity or uh, des designability culture into people who are already molded in some different ways now there must be some kind of challenges and blockades and obstacles which come in the way to you know infuse uh, the culture of design say design culture I mean, have you ever encountered anything like this? You know, some some difficulty, some where you know, say, "Oh my God!" And then it deviates you from your path somewhere else, and then you say, "Oh my, that's not where I intended to go." And then you come back. You know. Okay, it's a beautiful question, and uh, I feel that, uh, as I said, you know, designers take on larger challenges, and for me to create those pathways in undergraduate and postgraduate education within the state of Rajasthan. I approached the University of Rajasthan in the year 2005 mm -hmm. and it materialized in the year 2017. Can you imagine 12 years of journey going through this, uh, uh, you know, it was almost like pain because, yeah. you know, somebody, the mindset that does not allow you to think that design is required for this country. Mm. A mindset which says that design is not a mainstream career pathway. A mindset which says that engineering or humanities that's sufficient. Yeah. And not being able to see that 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 where we need where we as educators need to really uh, nurture and build. 
so it was very very challenging for me and while i moved into the city i found also one thing that was challenging was that designers were not paid because they felt that they would use them as somebody who would be another like a coordinator kind of a person but not somebody who would be an originator yeah. so if you are hiring somebody who's an originator there would be a cost attached to it i think somewhere we companies who have invested in designers have moved 10 notch up high there so if you look at uh, companies like dilip industries yeah they have hired designers all throughout the way if you look at manglam exports i think you were talking about them there are people who acknowledged design and the contribution and that's where they started giving new ideas to the world rather than just being uh, you know a service providers to them and becoming from the uh, you know manufacturers of design for them right. right so i think it's very important that you know the mindset is what is a great challenge mm-hmm. for uh, you know a culture to nurture so uh, if you have a conducive environment yes the culture builds very fast so even when we look at today the design fraternity somewhere uh, we feel that you know designers are not business oriented they're more like artist or they will do their what they they love to do or you know the the reality check is very weak you know so designers seem to be feeling like you know whatever they create they should be all accepted and right. when they find uh, not the approval of it from the industry or people they get disheartened a lot of designers uh, give up and i think it's very important that design has to constantly take critic you know that critical examination is very very important and critical thinking conceptual right. thinking i think these are values that need to be nurtured today in india we have loads of universities who have started design department are they going to be doing justice where is the conceptual thinking the thinking ahead of times the thinking for the future are we looking at design as uh, truly being able to look at new kind of opportunities or creating solutions or there are another number of more skill institutions being added to add to the industries uh, you know the different level of uh, employment within the yeah. industry and in yeah. the name of design there it is not fair you know to teach them only the skills which will be giving them mid level jobs right and i think it's very important that design has to be just because uh, you know a few institutions like us or others who have actually worked hard for 22 years we have spent years and years where i was told when i i made a big building in a heart of the city i was told oh ba education is in oh mba bahut acha chal raha hai aap mba kyun nahi khol lete hain aap ba ed kholiye na aapke bahut acha chalega aapka you know and i said no this is not what i am going to be here for this is what not this institution is meant to do so it's very important to look at you know what you stand for and what your belief is and what you want to create in the future right right so i think there's a challenge where today also i see when parents are not able to understand the value of design and design education is only limited to to a particular trade or a particular you know skill right Mm. so it's it's yeah. a time that you know i mean we can collectively build a culture of design yeah. where it's so, all about making a difference it's about creating delight creating value creating worth creating wealth and abundance yeah, thanks we have another question here which is i think quite connected to uh, uh, what we are talking about it's, uh, it's anonymous attendee says pandemic has created a gap in peer learning and doing more on campus how is arch planning to compensate for the time and experience that students deserve for a special upgrade to enhance students learning cycle what's the new special in arch post pandemic and i think this is a, something which every institution is facing every one in any education school be going and i think we have gone several steps ahead of this by you know doing such such programs who else is doing this as an institution i don't think so thank you bhargav sir you very well pointed out 
you know, we are somebody who have really, uh, you know, while, while people have not been thinking on these lines, we have created this whole Pink City Design Confluence, which we could have just done as a two-day event, and we could right. have gotten contributions and things. The learning series, I think, have our students actually heard these speakers? They are world-class people. Tomorrow, we have Thai global president. The whole startup e ecosystem looks up to him. Oh, right. who is he going to come and talk? Ashish Deshpande, Elephant Design. Look at the body of work that they have. He's going to be speaking day after. We have Professor Pradumna Vyas who created the India Design Mark, the India Design Council, spearheaded a leading design institution of the country for 20 years. Can you imagine his body of work and being at the World Design Organization, uh, you know, being a board member then, leading the education initiatives there. I mean, with these kind of speakers, look at Dinesh Korjan, who is teaching at the IITs in the design cell there. We've got, uh, you know, Kiran Beer Sethi, who runs at the school level, this whole initiative of design for change. We've got, we had uh, Satish Gokhale, the A's designer in the country with the kind of products that he has made, which are, you know, truly bringing value right from the Tata, you know, the water purifier to number of more right. examples that we've given. Dr. So Vishal we, Rao. Yeah, Vishal Rao, who's been an innovator uh, within the whole uh, cancer, you know, uh, domain in terms of creating yes. new uh, yes. solutions which are cheaper solutions now, if you have these kind of speakers these are the people what is this classroom we have made this classroom even public we yes. are giving free education today forget people who are paying us and coming to the institution we have made it available on youtube for every student anybody any parent anybody to hear these out we are bringing and it, it yeah and yeah. it also helps connect the viewers with the experts Yes, Directly you can connect. I mean, it's so much of learning in this. And sir, so, I think the digital economy has, I mean, the digital world has actually opened up so much for us that today I was sitting on the Cumulus Conference. I was connecting with people from Germany, from Helsinki to this and that. And I did not feel that there was any gap. If you're interested, there is no gap. If you're not interested, you might feel that you are losing out on peer learning. I have felt that the amount and the work that we have done in the last two years, I'll share one more thing. The open days that we did last year in November, we had 100 students present on Facebook Live over Zoom. We have right. our own design portal, which is known as the design communication portal, which we developed with a partnership with a Scottish college, uh, you know, uh, Perth College, UHI. Uh, and uh, this was a British Council funded project. And uh, all our portfolios of our students and the final work is on the design communication portal. Any parent can go and have a look at it, right? Every student's work has been uploaded there. The employers can go and see this. The portal existed in the institution for last seven years. Can you imagine nobody, even the students were told again and again, and they never bothered to put their work on it. Today, right. everybody's work is on it. And we had 100 students present their work through the portal right. for two full days. We had Rocio from Spain who sat at five in the morning, right? Can you imagine because of the time difference? Because he started the session at 9.30 until six in the evening, giving feedback to every student. And we had this kind of interaction with every student, you know, and any parent can see and any student can see the kind of right. work and the right. feedback we got. Recently, we did it in the month of May where you were there as well. We had... Uh, you know, around 35 students who presented their work and yeah. the kind of feedback that they were getting and this kind of learning from one student's work, the presentation, so many getting so many viewpoints, which does not happen in a classroom space. Right. When you are in the campus, you get one person, one-to-one -one talking or in a group of couple of people there, there is a, so much of inputs that you're getting. You can learn so much. So it's about an attitude. I think we need to leverage this This in this right. new world. Absolutely. Yeah. We have to look at coming from that old school thinking and see that how we can make the best of this opportunity because this is going to be the way, you know, and this blended learning model is the best model, I feel. And while the institution was open for four months, we did this installation of 25 feet long garment. Yeah. We had... Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, the IPS officer who visited us on campus, she, she talked to the students. She, right. you know, so beautiful, you know. I mean, yeah. we were expecting our students to be on campus, but can you imagine? Yeah. Students still preferred to stay in their homes and they didn't come on the, for the classrooms. Right. 
and when so I, there's a beautiful question when he's asking this and there are couple of students I'll, I'll i can even name them they are so much interested they would not miss any online session they will not miss out on any instagram chats we had the alumni you know people everybody was there today we have every alternate day we have the campus to company initiative and we have our alumni chatting with our own students what is required what are the gaps what are the industry looking at so i think more than being on peer learning here that's Absolutely. not thought in fact with the creative dignity we touched yeah. with craftsmen and artisans from across india and yeah. we did their craft documentation we did their put their you know we brought all their uh, we did the yeah. cataloging for them and the students were so enriched in the whole process so i think it's again are we able to see all these things or or the or we are we able to just only see that okay it's missing so but what it has gotten more and we would be had been on holidays right now but we are not on holidays we are not on holidays surely we are working year 24/7 to make yeah. sure that our students our learners who are sitting at home get the best of classroom experience i would have not been able to give give bring these speakers to them if i, I was on a you know those live campus kind of thing with them like, okay satish has his time blocked he's not yeah. available yes. he, his travel schedule is blocked but today they're so generously giving out and one more interesting thing which you know um, uh, leads us to this last question uh, which says uh, well i'll call it the last question just to be in synchronicity with time uh, okay. the say no doubt an esteemed set of professionals have appeared as speakers but how are we regulating and checking the realization of their learning into reality now after every session we are i mean the the the, the students or listeners have to write a reflective note on the learnings and so many reflective notes have come with amazing revelations about their learnings and this itself is a very positive thing so don't worry uh, we are adapting to the new normal i think students of any i mean any domain need to adapt and we are giving all the possible all the opportunities within whatever limitations we can we have we are giving it and i think together we can so bhargav sir i think you know again as i said uh, mindset is a very big thing now yes. there's a great shift in mindset which is required in the in the in uh, for guardians to look at you know right. for parents to uh, you know see education from a very different light they had to see that today you know it's not only in the classroom and especially design education does not happen in the four walls it happens with people it happens in situations it today is a situation to learn i think look at nfts look at digital asset creation this is the new world today we've been avoiding crypto right cryptocurrency today crypto is the foundation for nfts nfts have been uh, the non fungible tokens creation of digital assets which never happened in the past today your asset can move hand to hand and the original creator will keep getting the uh, money coming to them now these are new ways of the world that has evolved yeah. are we privy to this are we looking at them as opportunities yes so i think you know there has to be a completely 360 degree mindset shift in people how they are looking at education and how even educators are going to teach now we have to stop yes of teaching as we understand we have to let people explore and dive we have to have them come and be in, curious we have realized one thing that somewhere you know the curiosity level is it going is it fading because they're thinking that things will be the same things will never be be the same they better be curious now to know what will they change around them so i think it's a great time for young people to completely reinvent the wheel and look at people like you sir you are in your you know you're a senior citizen now right but when i look at you i see you as younger in mind and heart more than a, a youngster when i talk to you 
and I and, and look at my passion. You know, I mean, I I am learn, learning. I'm curious. I'm, I'm 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 excited. So is this available right now with young people, or are they waiting? Are they waiting? They don't need to wait. Life is happening right now. Action is right now, and it's not that peer learning will be some different peer. This is peer learning happening. Yes, I've enjoyed these conversations with the best right. of minds. Yes. Beautiful experience. And believe me, arts is a crucible. It's a crucible for catalytic reactions, which will take you into synergies of co-creation into the new normal. So, I think at this point. Uh, it's past uh, one ten, and uh, it's been an amazing uh, session. So, amazing first session. my last word, sir. So, I want to thank everybody who's been, uh, you know, able to contribute and participate in these sessions with us. And uh, my thanks in advance to my next three speakers also. And uh, thank you for your being uh, with us. And I feel the great amount of value that you have brought to the institution, to our stakeholders. Uh, I, it, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, please make the best of these series. Go on to the YouTube and please take your own in your own time. You're the out. You will really love them. You know, there's so much of learning that you will see. So um, uh, I want to again uh, say thanks to my entire team here at Arch who've been very supportive that, you know, without having breaks, without taking any holidays, they're all committed to make sure that nobody feels this gap and we can fully make even this, the, the summer break, which we call it as summer break, but it's, we are making the most of the time to make sure that when our students come back, as the government has said, that you know, the Rajasthan government has said that already skill-based education, I mean, jo kaushal sikhati hai. And while design education is lots, which is hands-on, I think our students will be very soon on campus to learn because we are not, we are a very, uh, you know, compact institution. Our focus is very strong. Our labs are all waiting, you know, our woodwork, 3D printing, prototyping labs, they're all waiting to have you in. So just be ready to come back to campus and be with us. So have a nice, uh, rest of your day have a nice day yeah. thanks thank you sir. thank you